All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Chris Longo, the Director of Sales and Marketing at AOPEN. I want to thank you for joining us today on our Modernizing Communication and Senior Living. Um, so as we continue to endure, obviously, the consistent change that we all hear about, the so-called, air quote, new normal, uh, some of the areas in life that are going to require in, um, that change do require instant communication. But uh, a lot of areas that people don't take into consideration um, don't happen to adapt very well to instant change. So um, it's, it's a slower role uh, just because it's more difficult to move over those categories in time. So we decided uh, we were going to partner with one of the leaders in hospitality solutions, uh, especially in, in senior living, and that is uh, InTouchLink whose uh, award-winning technology offers a solution that's gonna stay connected, but it's simple and it keeps you connected in an expedited way. So uh, just really fast on a quick note, the webinar is being recorded and all the materials will be available following the webinar. We're also gonna have a uh, time for Q and A session at the end. So if you have any questions, feel free to use the, the Q and A section and we'll be able to get to those questions. If we run out of time, we'll be able to email and answer any questions that you have. So let's uh, go ahead now and kick it over to AOPEN's Manager of Technology Solutions, Miles Schofield. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> thanks, for, uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Welcome to another AOPEN webinar. As Chris mentioned, we're talking about uh, senior living vertical uh, today. Uh, my name is Miles Schofield. So let's talk about uh, what we're going to talk about today. So. Um, first and foremost, uh, we, as Chris mentioned, we're, this webinar is with the number one uh, provider of uh, messaging and communication, digital signage, in-room technology, handheld mobile technology in the industry, in TouchLink. Uh, we have their VP of Sales and Marketing here today, Justin Goderis, and he's going to do the regular thing. I'm dying of the plague today, so he's gonna, I'm going to let him do most of the talking. And uh, he's going to give you, as usual, a quick uh, introduction, what they do, the solutions they offer, and of course, really uh, drill down into uh, some use cases and some ROI about how much these types of technologies can really affect these type of communities. Uh, and <clears throat> the main thing to point out, of course, and the value uh, uh, is, that I always bring up in these webinars is InTouchLink is the leader because they specialize in this vertical, right? Anyone, any digital signage company can put a... a, a an image on a screen, uh, but you know they are a full featured, multi-solution, tailored uh, uh, company towards this vertical. And you'll, you'll be able to see that with the amount of uh, unique, specialized uh, solutions and applications that they offer in the space. So he's going to go through uh, intro and use cases. And then, of course, I'm going to talk about uh, some of AOPEN's products in the space. And uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about uh, some of the really exciting solutions that they InTouchLink offers uh, that we really haven't talked about much um, in, in a webinar lately. You know, we've mostly been talking about uh, point of sale and different types of retail and things like that. But uh, I'd like to bring up some of these more social messaging types of uh, technologies today as well uh, to, to highlight um, their value in the future. So uh, with that, let me kick it over to uh, Justin. Thanks very much, Miles. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to uh, you know, work together uh, for this webinar. I think it's going to be very impactful, not only for those in uh, the technology space looking for solutions and, and really uh, broadening that communication as far as the, um, the industry is con uh, concerned, but certainly for the uh, communities and enterprise uh, providers that are looking for something to really make that change in the industry. Um, so I think, you know, really, and again, just to reintroduce myself, uh, my name is Justin Goddard. So I'm the vice president at uh, InTouchLink. And today we're going to be talking about modernizing technology, really that engagement uh, of the residents. And what's all uh, too much important in our industry is increasing that occupancy. Um, everything is all, all well and good, uh, you know, in terms of building a lifestyle and environment for folks. But obviously, if we don't have the, the beds filled in the residence here, uh, again, it's, it's all for naught. So when we talk about uh, overall, uh, today we're going to be discussing the tools to enhance communication in your particular senior living properties, how to scale and streamline information at multiple communities, 
uh, the importance of transparency and efficient communication as a whole, and how to use these tools to increase that occupancy, uh, overall engagement, and of course, uh, really deriving a solid ROI. So a little bit about InTouchLink. Uh, we are focused on communication, engagement, and operational streamlining. Really, it's all about driving resident satisfaction. We've been around since 2007, uh, and our platform, unlike many others on the market, was designed by senior living professionals. So this wasn't something that was adapted to serve the industry, is really we had gone through all the trials and tribulations ourselves to understand what were the gaps here and how do we address those. As a whole, we drive an average increase of 65% at resident satisfaction rates, all surveyed, and a 12% increase to overall conversions of new prospects and families. Again, big, big point. We service presently today over 60,000 plus users across the North uh, American market and across that spectrum of care. So that's independent living, assisted, long-term care, memory care, skilled nursing, uh, all the way through the hospice and many CCRCs. So the way it was historically is uh, it was this image, uh, you know, and you may recognize this from the Simpsons of residents parked in front of a window, looking out, you know, longing for interaction, longing for attention, uh, longing for really engagement and, and information. This negative connotation still exists in the minds of some, but things have been changing. Uh, really in the last decade, our industry has changed substantially. And certainly in the last three years, in part due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, ever more so. This is what people are looking for today. So that, that very stark image to, I wanna feel like Rose feels here. You know, I wanna have that happy feeling that um, you know, I'm, I'm being engaged. I have that communal atmosphere. And not only is this something that the individual resident is looking for, very much so because it's oftentimes a family decision to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to sell my property and move to this community. So I want to know and feel comfortable that I'm moving into a place that truly is home, not just a box. If we talk about what's happening today, so demographics changing, baby boomers now, 2021, have hit the age mark of 75. And what's very different about the residents that are now uh, looking for these communities is they've been the biggest consumers of media as we know it today. It's the television, it's the radio, it's magazines, it's newspapers. And when you look at this statistic, 90% of baby boomers have a Facebook account. This tells you something that you can't discount seniors as not being tech savvy as one, but not wanting to adopt technology for communication. This particular generation now has been reconnecting with long lost family members using ancestry.com, using all these different means to engage. And the expectation is that now as an individual, I've been doing all these steps to manage my finances, looking for uh, you know, a nice place to move into, I don't want to go there without that same opportunity to communicate the way I have previously. What's really important to note, and, and again, these are some very unfortunate numbers for the senior living industry as a whole, as of 2021, operating expenses are at an all-time high. So really, labor costs are accounting for over 60% of these expenditures. That is with uh, antiquated technologies, uh, broken processes, um, you know, and, and in some instances, it's, it's management that uh, isn't end to end. Senior housing occupancy, and again, this is one of, one of the biggest things that we struggle with in this industry, it's hit a record low at 78.8%, um, dastardly numbers. Senior loneliness has increased to 56%, more than double the amount in 2018. Um, again, this is something that, of course, has been impacted by this pandemic. But if we're going to make a change here, and again, this goes back to lifestyle engagement, and of course, when we're justifying ourselves as a community where a resident wants to move into and a family wants to support, 
we need to find a way to address this. And this is very alarming. Family and residents trust in long-term care as a whole is down. 96% of seniors would do everything possible to avoid moving into a long-term care home. Wasn't always the case, but we have to do something. So communication in the past. We use the tried and true tools, our Word, our Excel, our PowerPoints, phone calls, printables. Of course, there's definitely still value in these when it comes to day-to-day -day sort of administration internally, but it does not foot the bill when it comes to overall internal and external communication. So what does this mean for the senior living industry as a whole? It means we have to innovate. We have to look for solutions that are gonna provide scalable, uh, easy and fast real-time communication for all the individual stakeholders. We need to create interactive scenarios for folks to understand why I want to move here or how do I know who my neighbor is or what's going on here. Again, what sets this community apart from the rest? We need to really focus on the smart assistance, you know, beyond the value for those that may have a vision impairment or mobility impairment is this is becoming very ubiquitous amongst many seniors is I can ask for something and what's more native than a voice to say, hey, can you give me information? Also the ability for a very clean, transparent and simplistic way for families and residents and staff members to communicate via video, via messaging, uh, and really in a HIPAA environment, very critical. And certainly not uh, last but not least, is the ability to really transmit that real-time information, you know, urgent messaging, uh, that mixture of info and entertainment and engagement again. So today, really senior living operators and, and the administrators and the staff members at each and every one of these communities at whatever level are contending with so many points of information. I need to be managing activity calendars. I need to be managing menus. I need to be managing uh, dismissals, references, maintenance requests, updates, all of these things. And again, going back to the way things have been done historically, it's a multitude of different systems. Becomes very difficult to maintain and especially at scale. Now, when we talk about the importance of transparency as a whole, and we'll get back to what we do to address those pieces, those fractured systems, is families expected, residents expected. Because of the changing demographics, folks are gonna look very differently in a particular community over another to say, hey, I've been used to and accustomed to this type of information. One of my biggest concerns is, do I have the ability to engage with my loved one? And we know that there are barriers to entry for many folks. Um, that, you know, there may be a family member states away or thousands of miles away. How do we encourage them to A, proactively engage? Or how do we as a community proactively engage with them with the most minimal input and time investment? And the whole idea is to use these communication tools and technology to bring people together. This is what it's all about. They're very altruistic, intensive uh, components to this, but obviously as operations, as businesses as well, we wanna look at how do we make this sustainable for us? You know, where do we make that right investment? How do we say, okay, technology is not scary anymore and can we justify that ROI? So this is what brings us to using proper communication with this partnership through AOPEN and in TouchLink. You want something that's going to be available to you at any time. It doesn't matter what the technical aptitude is, uh, whether you have a staff member that uh, really the, the most they're comfortable with is Facebook or using Outlook for their email. Um, but then for those that have, whether they're in a sales or a marketing capacity or an executive director role, or perhaps I'm a program manager 
or I may be responsible for a region is that I have the capability to not only make sure information is pushed appropriately, but dig in and make sure that we're meeting that consistency across the board. If I have one, two, five, 10, 100 communities. Let's talk about the tools. The Community Family and Resident Portal, um, we've had this as a component of our business for quite some time. Uh, I would say our adoption rates were good, but they were not substantial. Certainly since the pandemic, this became something that was a requisite. The idea behind the Community Family and Resident Portal is a way for families and residents to be kept up to date with what's going on in the community. Families can send requests directly to departments within their community. Uh, if they have maintenance, dietary, administrative, uh, RSVP requests, example would be whether I'm Mrs. Jones in my room, I have a burnt out light bulb. And you know if I have access to this, I can send that down to front desk and concierge and let them know. That can then be funneled through, potentially through an integration uh, into your work order platform. It's all audit trailed. And the same goes for family members. Family members that then externally want to do that on behalf of the resident, they can accomplish that. All the data that's been entered here, and you'll, you'll see this as part of how these communication tools should work, is less data input. If I've entered in you know, activities, events, menus, uh, birthdays, and ever, you name it, it should all be in one place and it's more about where you channel this information. This is what this is all about. Now, to add to that, meal tracking is a major way to get that visibility to the family member. And so again, when you're thinking about this, it's not just about how we use this internally, which we can very much do. We can say, hey, a resident has moved in recently and they're not eating three squares a day, they're eating one. Is that a trigger for our staff to go and engage them and say, perhaps they're depressed, they're not feeling well. But certainly for the family member as well, is for them to have that ability to understand if I'm pushing this information through that portal that's unique, connected between that family member and that resident, I can make sure you know my loved one is eating properly and on a regular basis. Same goes with activity tracking. And now this one in particular, is very important. Not only you know, when we talk about overall nutrition and wellness that comes with meals, activities as a whole have a direct impact on mental acuity, uh, physical well being, and overall, and this is a term that people need to use more and more is happiness. Happiness is difficult to quantify, but that is what supports an extended lifespan for folks. And for operators, again, minimizes risk. So with the activity tracker, the ability to capture this individual resident is attending these different classes or these different events or exercises or group activities. Not only can I get an understanding of who this individual is, where they're engaged, but it's very important for justifying the ROIs of my programs. I may have two particular exercise classes that continue to be booked up to a certain degree. And I have these two others that are always poorly attended. Now, does that mean that we're not promoting it well enough? Or does it mean that it's not meeting the interests of our demographic? So I have the ability to look at this and make those decisions internally and say, you know what? If we're trying to stretch and use our budget properly, these ones don't make sense. So you know what? Let's extend this class. Let's make a duplicate and maybe use the same instructor for a marginal increase. And of course, this saves uh, incredible time and of course saves those budgets. And this bolsters that inclusiveness as a whole. So before I move on, is that the last piece on that activity tracker is again, going back to that family and community portal, is that ability for family members to understand what is my loved one doing? Uh, I was gonna call my mother. I can say, hey, I see you've been taking piano classes. Well, on one side, I now have something to talk to her about, of course, but I can say, you know what? She has been engaged and this is a wonderful community for her. And of course that helps to justify 
that rent roll and investment at this community. Let's talk about smart assistance. So this is the way things are going. More and more and more, it's been being proven that seniors are not incapable of interacting with technology. Um, I, I would say to anybody that thinks that, throw that concept out of your head, throw it out the window. This is the way things are going. And the idea is it's less about the technology. It's not about the technology. The idea is to enable these residents to get the information they need, regardless of their interaction point. I can ask the question natively and understand what's happening within my community. Uh, maybe it's even a, uh, depending on how you program it, I want to have that daily check in. You know, we may be in a hot spot for COVID. I want it to ask the question of our resident, maybe every morning, how are you feeling? Do you feel hot? Right? Information we can utilize. Again, opportunities to transmit uh, larger announcements to say, hey, uh, this is something we should really uh, you know, talk about today. And now when we talk about that evolution from there, so the audible component is the video aspect of this. So with HIPAA video calling with a telemed aspect, and if you're using a solution that is designed specifically for seniors, and I, I can't emphasize this enough, that there are a million and one technologies out there that, yes, you know, you can use this, that, and the other, and you can download that. When it's not designed to support your demographic, that's where things fall apart. Adoption rates go like this, and your ROI goes like this, and the idea is to make it seamless transparent and simplistic for everyone. So you need something that's very easy to use. You need something that's also externally gonna work very well uh, for those uh, family members. Again, there's always a barrier to entry. You introduce technology at a community and or introduce that to family members. You don't want it to be difficult, whether it's a download. So this type of ac application can work as a download or straight natively through a web browser. You can use the video calling aspects to enable a resident, if perhaps they're in assisted living, to tap a picture of their loved one. You know, my grandson, I want to call him. Boom, I can do that. I don't have to put in any logins. I don't have to put in a phone number or a user ID. None of that. I can connect with them. Again, too, there can be two-way relay components. So I want to ask her, hey, did you take your medication today? And you can create what's called, you know, what we've coined the circle of care is dependent on who that resident is. It may be their loved one, their POA, um, and it could also be their physician. So if we need to, in this current environment, we're not going to, um, you know, have a resident go out to the pharmacy to go see their doctor based on circumstances, we can set up the call intimately. And it's between a family member or a uh uh, care provider at the community um, and can discuss with that physician, what do we need? And by virtue of these types of platforms, then that transmission of critical and sensitive information, medical records, pharmacy transcripts, um, and all those, again, designed to work within that HIPAA compliancy. This is one of those aspects that's become all too critical today when you don't want to look at a fractured system at every single one of your communities. You want to have one unified solution that you know you can, boom, shoot out to everyone at one time. People can log in and they have access to their family members. The community kiosk. So this is one of the latest innovations that's really hit the market and has really taken it by storm. The idea is driving that interactivity. And, and this is something that I've also seen from many partners uh, that we work with, that seniors more and more and more, again, based on where they are in their life cycle and what they've been accustomed to, they want that level of interaction. So the idea with the community kiosk, again, running off the same platform with AOpen and InTouchLink, is that they can get access to the information that they want. So that could be using this for community tours, and through that, I can showcase my program diversity. I can talk about my culinary options. I can allow residents to RSVP 
for classes or um, you know events, even family members. I can showcase on that prospecting side, floor plan layouts. I can showcase my move-in specials. Uh, I can talk to my community demographics through our resident directory, which we won't go into too much detail on, but it allows residents that are coming into the community to better understand who's gonna be my neighbor. You know, Can I quickly search and say, hey, uh, Joe also likes to go fishing. I love to go fishing too. You know what? This seems like a great community for me. And of course, for those existing residents to have that same ability to find each other. Um, capture that family resident feedback, transportation bookings, again, photos, videos, there, there are a myriad of ways to utilize the system like this, but because it's so native, there aren't you know big keyboards, there aren't all these technical aspects, people can just tap on the pieces that they want and get the information that they need. And this has really gone a long way in supporting that tactile engagement. Um, and a, a beautiful example of how the merging of technology with really lifestyle engagement uh, makes a huge impact on communities. And, and we can say confidently that when it comes to community ambassadors, and these can be folks that are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, as well as marketing staff, sales professionals, um, they see the value here. It really makes all the difference in the world. So the in-room channel is, uh, this is really a, a lot of what's done here. And, and again, you know, just making sure of time, I will go through a, a very steady clip. Uh, the in-room channel basically allows for information that's beyond digital signage. This is not a PowerPoint. Uh, it's completely focused on the senior living demographic within your community. It's customized for your residents. It's tailored to promote your lifestyle, your unique brand, your residents' interests, higher engagement through a class-leading customized channel. Again, we help you through this. All these little boxes is all sped up, but it shows you the different types of things you can do here. So live stream in a video, uh, live weather, urgent announcements down at the bottom, uh, whether they're innocuous or something of importance. Very, very, very important. Live streaming. So you have the capability through this to have a uh, individual stream an event that can then showcase on all these different channels. Um, we'll talk a little bit more in a moment. And when we talk about a system that's cohesive, because forget about the aspect of, you know, I have this tool and this tool and this tool and this tool and this tool, it's, I have one, it's one tool. So the information I put in, and the example would be here, whether it's a video I need to broadcast, whether it's pre-recorded or something live or information I need to get across as a administrator, maybe I'm responsible for X number of communities, and I have an instructor that uh, was sick and let me know at four in the morning that they're not gonna make it, I can quickly transmit that information in real time and it updates across one and or 10 or 20 or hundred different communities, depending on who would be interacting with that. So why do we consider an in-room channel? This is a case study that was uh, conducted in September, 2020. Basically the idea was before the in-room channel, it was much more paper-based. Yeah, there were some PowerPoint digital signage components, uh, but residents as a whole felt that communication was at a disadvantage. They were very much dissatisfied. After the survey, post-implementation, residents were 65% more satisfied. As a whole, they found, and again, this was just something that, that happened, they found that uh, residents viewed their in-room channel every day, the vast majority. 80% of these residents found the in-room channel content useful. Again, very important based on the information that you provide, informative, entertainment-wise, um, and that has to be tailored to your community. And ultimately, 71% of these residents felt the communication improved since implementing it. Based on polls, 77% increase in awareness, 30% improved engagement, 53% overall positive impact. These are important numbers. Again, when we're talking about quality of life, absolutely. But again, this ties back into your business case and your business model as a community. If you can't put these numbers up on the board, why is someone gonna come to your community versus the other one down the street that maybe promotes the same things aesthetically that you do? Community message broadcasting, 
I'll go through this super quick. The idea here is that I'm a staff member, whether at a singular community or responsible for region or at an enterprise level, and I need to get a message out to everybody, family members, residents, staff. Maybe I need to segment by demographic. Is it AL versus IL? Uh, is it just staff members? Is it just family members? And I can then transmit that with a single message everywhere via email, via text, via television screens um, to that portal. Really, simplification. That's the key. So let's talk about ROI. So I implore everyone here go to our website. Uh, if you go right to our homepage, www one uh, in touchlink.com, you'll find a little button for an RI calculator. You can get your own. So you don't have to fully rely on what I'm going to show you now. Get that for yourself. But this is real. This is an example. So in one instance, just using a portion of our system. Again, there's so many other pieces I can show you, but just on this monthly activity, uh, activity calendar preparation and printing, five hours saved. Daily activity calendar preparation, two and a half saved. Weather printing, some do it, some don't, an hour saved. Uh, dietary, menu preparation, five hours. Front desk, and this is a big one, front desk and department inquiries from residents reduced by 10 hours. Not gonna say that you'll never get those calls, they'll never come by your desk, because of course they will, substantial savings. So in this particular instance, at a particular community setting, that's 25 and a half hours per month saved. And when you really do the math, that averages out to $6,000 to $10,000 per year of savings for an individual community. Big. Next one, activity spent. This is the savings use case. So let's say I have a community. I have one instructor-led class. $300, that's when I pay this instructor. It could be an entertainer, it could be an instructor. Let's say I do that two times a month, which is a reality in this industry. So I'm paying $600. Now let's assume instead of one community, I'm doing it across my 20 communities. This is $12,000 a month. That's an overall cost of $144,000. And this I think is even very conservative. I've seen many community, go much further based on the demographic and the expectation, much larger number. So how do we tackle this? Again, this is communication, this is ROI. I have an individual, whether it's someone that's a third party or someone on staff, maybe you wanna get one of your activity managers trained to do osteo yoga, okay? Maybe that's $600 class, $1,000 class, fine. Or you use some of our pre-recorded content through our partnerships with Wellness Link. But you can transmit this information to all of your communities. So what this means for you is that you're not having one person or two people at every single one of your communities on a consistent basis. Extreme expenditure, and especially in a time right now where occupancy is like this, we're trying to get it like this. This not only will save you incredibly, but will allow you to really promote the quality of your content overall. I can control this at head office or on a regional basis. Very, very important. So lastly, really talking about the outcomes. It's a higher level of operations in ROI. Improve your resident engagement with your, uh, with your community by 75%. Raise your activity and social participation by 26%. Informing those family members, again, this is what helps get them in the door. It's not about the after the fact I'm telling them, it's now. You tell them when they come into the community, here's how we're going to engage you. You will always know what we're doing. You're going to improve your brand cohesiveness and support your marketing impact. You'll increase your move-ins by 12%. Setting yourself apart from everyone else in the area. Achieve those better results with less staff. $6,000 to $10,000 per community per year. Again, that's not utilizing all the portions to roll up into a singular solution. 
and live stream, save up to $200,000 a year. Again, based on the size and the scale of your community. These are very compelling numbers and these are real. Now us, quickly, we're all about the turnkey setup, next level support. We take you through every step of this. Technology is not something to uh, adopt lightly. Um, there's so many people who will, oh, here's all the great things you can do, but then they'll never be there for you and they won't take you through it. That's not our style. We partner with you to achieve your unique vision. So you may have your own individual sensibilities. We get to know your particular demographic, your region. Uh, and again, we can also leverage our experience and our best practices to support that. We help you to design this so that it matches your brand aesthetic overall and that the messaging is consistent, tried and true. And we see the problems in this solution through heartbeat notifications. And again, in partnership with AOPEN that nobody else does. And what that means, and it's very important for your IT and your maintenance staff, no one's having to go all the time to go check on the hardware components. We're looking at these things on a regular basis. So we can potentially tell before something goes awry and make the switch on the back end. We want to talk about additional time and labor and stress savings. There's one. And we're only supporting North America. So what that means is that there's no outsourcing. You get to know us personally, and we understand your communities. Here's an example of the way we actually do an implement. We go through a full Gantt chart process. Everything is broken down step by step. And granted, we do have our best practice. We have to tweak and modify all this based on how you operate. But this will give you assurances that we're going to go through the process and we're going to do it right. And you know, I, I can never say 100% of the time, we'll never miss any tiny you know, uh, little milestone because it happens on both sides. But that we're always looking to this as our, um, you know, our brass ring of perfection. And that's how we operate. So in short, in TouchLink, we're customized to your community needs. Um, we're all about enterprise management designed around your initiatives. Everything is about full partnership and unlimited support. We have custom apps integrations to service your residents and yourselves and the family members and the staff. We do full project mapping, SLA-based scalable rollouts, and we have those surveys. So when I, when I showed you those studies earlier, some of those are derived from that. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We provide it to you. So again, when you're trying to justify this for yourself, you know this has been successful or not. So lastly, I'll say, and, and again, you know, who uh, I love taking as, as a film, but to me, this really speaks volumes to what I experienced going into the senior living space myself, is having spent, you know, tons of times at different communities, um, working with anyone from an RN to an executive director, to an activity director, to uh, an activities coordinator, is that we have a very particular level of skills I've acquired over a very long time. And in senior living, it's something not to be taken lightly. Everyone who works within this space wears copious hats, doesn't matter at what level. And the one thing we can do for the heroes of our industry, because we're supporting so many lives, is provide the right tools. If as organizations, we can justify the right tools, if again, we can also justify that ROI for ourselves, and we can prove that we're getting the right residents and families coming in. And who's gonna argue with that? So that's my last piece. I wanna now kick it back over uh, to Miles in a moment, but, but I wanna talk to just ever so briefly why AOPEN. So in TouchLink specifically chose AOPEN to be our strategic partner when it came to developing this um, you know, rollout of technology because we did our research. We talked to a uh, myriad of other companies. We'd worked with some of them and we're not satisfied. AOPEN has proven time and time again that not only do they have the best in class support team, because this is exactly what we tell and provide to our clients, and there is a relationship there, but that the technology they provide is extremely commercial grade, tried and tested over time, and it's a 24 seven model. Our communities cannot support 
that disparity in communication. If it breaks down, they're going to be major problems. So we've been very, very thankful for this partnership. And, and again, very, very thankful for, you know, this ability to present to the group here. So thank you, Miles. Apologies for going a bit over time here, uh, but I'll get back over to you. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> like I said, I'll take any excuse not to talk as much. So <clears throat> thanks again for, for your segment, Justin. Let me get the screen back here really quick. One second. There we go. All right, so um, I hope you enjoyed Justin's segment. I thought it was really, really interesting. And the, the one last piece I wanted to, that came to mind as he was finishing up there is of course that, that line about scalability. Uh, one of the things that uh, you know prepped uh, for this webinar with Justin is that you don't have to immediately start and buy iPads for absolutely everyone in your community. That's why they have so many of these types of solutions. You can start with an entranceway solution or a lunchroom solution or a digital signage solution and then a, a, a kiosk solution. So they have steps in terms of the, the, your ability to integrate on the upfront hardware cost of things, right? So if all the residents don't already have iPhones and, and things like that, there's always different solutions. Every, every uh, business is gonna be different because they're gonna have different levels of uh, technology adoption and uh, presence, right? A lot of, some of these homes may have uh, screens all over the place. And then others may need actually need to buy screens uh, for entranceway, lunchroom, and activity-based screens, et cetera, et cetera. So that's another great thing is that they're able to scale these solutions with the adoption of uh, the hardware and the technology uh, with these communities. So uh, what I quickly just wanted to cover today is of course, just the AOPEN piece of this. Uh, if you don't know already AOPEN, uh, we have just a wide range of mini PCs. They're just little computers and they're just purely designed to last as long as possible and be as reliable as possible. That's it, no frills. Well, they have frills, right? They have extra features that makes it great. Like uh, they're all solid state and they have uh, secure, uh, safety clips and it's easy to wall mount. And so they're designed for this type of situation. And AOPEN, the type of relationship and how we work with partners like in touch link is we just try and make the acquisition process the tech process the setup process uh and the fulfillment process as easy as possible so they know uh, when they're getting it uh what they're getting uh if anything goes wrong if they have any tech issues we have a whole team for that as well too to help streamline and it's really about that partnership is about representing a cohesive solution right that's the whole reason is because if you just buy an off-the-shelf box uh, a consumer box, it, it may work, but you're not going to get anyone to help you. It's not worth their time to talk to you. But AOPEN is really a partnership model where we represent these solutions with our partners and ensure their, uh, their fantastic operation uh, over time. So of course, uh, uh, InTouchLink is a, a web-based platform. It runs on basically anything. And, and that's sort of the options that AOPEN has too. We support all sorts of different partners, Windows, Linux, Chrome, Android. Um, and like I said, we can do all sorts of white glove service and, and things like that. So that's really the, the cl clear AOPEN message. And the way you integrate with these solutions is uh, AOPEN has all sorts of all-in-one devices, which we just, we've been uh, discussed in the last webinar. But in generally speaking, uh, this type of solution where you just have a box either connected to uh, a screen in a lobby uh, or an entranceway area to create digital signage. But the other aspect of it is why you uh, might want to actually do the in-room TV, right? So uh, uh, buy a device to run an in-room TV. And it's because uh, if you haven't seen it yet, AOPEN has a blog called uh, Tech Playbook. And uh, in that, I sort of discuss the reason why uh, the adoption rate for uh, systems um, like WebOS and Tizen aren't super high yet is because the industry is driving uh, platforms based off of real browsers. And a lot of SOC systems don't like that, don't support all of the modern web technologies with Chrome OS. And there's sort of a battle uh, where eventually they'll get there and SOCs will be able to run things like a full version of Windows, a full version of Linux, and a real version of Chrome OS. But until then, it makes sort of the development gap sort of a pain. So 
a lot of these systems um, that you see in hospitalities, like for instance, this uh, solution is super common in uh, hotels, especially in Las Vegas, they all have uh, in-room TV systems and they all have to run uh, off of separate little mini PCs to get all that extra uh, power and web technology into the device. Cause you don't want to limit, you're paying for a specialized high-end solution and so you, you don't want to be limited by the fact that the SOC only has one dimension of web, to, web support. So uh, from a hardware standpoint, these solutions are just super, super simple uh, to execute and implement. So the other thing from a business standpoint, I want to talk about some of what Justin said, but more of just a general business perspective. Just want to reiterate what he said is the boomers, the, the, the people who move into uh, the senior uh, living facilities are going to be, it's uh, uh, of uh, uh, middle class and have more money, right? And baby boomers in particular have, uh, uh, we're focusing on that demographic because they're the ones expected to move into uh, this vertical in the near future. As he mentioned, they just uh, started to hit 75. And uh, the reason why that's important is because they're supposed to have all the money. This, you know, I don't think if baby boomers are really the richest generation in America, I don't think they're going to accept that stare out the window type of uh, environment that Justin said that he's fighting over there, right? So they're going to demand higher class uh, technology, features, services, all this sort of stuff. And that's exactly why InTouchLink uh, exists is because they're trying to drag that industry into the future. Uh, and it really makes... Uh, 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 your facility stand out. You know, uh, uh, the same goes for any uh, any other type of hospitality industry. You know, they started to put lobby screens and community screens up in all sorts of apartment buildings and and uh, boards and uh, and casinos have screens all over the place. And so it's become sort of a hallmark of uh, technology integration and a higher standard of living is having this technology integrated into the living center, uh, specifically for communication and of course, advertisement and things like that in the other industries. But this is why it's such an exciting industry is because the people with the money are reaching that age where they're gonna move into this vertical, uh, which makes it extremely, uh, uh, it could be huge. Uh, effectively. So the other thing that I wanted to bring up that he mentioned was, of course, uh, how do you deal with technology proficiency? Uh, you know, how, uh, uh, how much you really want to give uh, cell phones to, you know, all your, um, or smartphones to every single uh, person in your facility. And uh, I thought this chart was a little interesting. You can see that the biggest marker of tech proficiency is really income. Makes sense when you think about it in terms of cell phone, uh, smartphone versus a cell phone adoption. Yes, uh, cell phones still exist without the screens. Apparently, I haven't seen anyone use one for a while. But uh, this is it. Like Justin mentioned, you really need to adopt uh, the type of technology uh, and use it, make sure that it fits the technology proficiency, right? If you have an older, uh, uh, lower class generation who never grew up with smartphone or never used a smartphone, then there, maybe you go with more of a kiosk or an in-room type of solution uh, instead of a more mobility-based uh, 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 solution. So once again, it's about uh, tailoring the solution specific to the community and the needs of the community. So the two types of solutions I want to talk about more generally uh, 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 that uh, InTouchLink specifically focuses on is the value of tele telehealth. Telehealth, uh, in my opinion, is going to be one of the, the, the bar none most valuable technologies because you know, when I first graduated from college uh, a million years ago, my first job was uh, in healthcare and it was about uh, resource uh, uh, utilization and concentration, right? It was a mail merge on all the Southern hospitals in the United States. And this type of uh, thing, it, it, it's, it's a win-win because uh, consolidation of resources allows uh, more savings on all the metrics that you can imagine. And uh, it increases availability, which means that your product is overall better, right? Uh, you know, pretty much everyone in the healthcare that I've talked to is all about this. Uh, it's, of course, implemented very well in other countries, and the U.S., uh, in my opinion, <laughs> must eventually follow, and I think they will. Uh, lots of large healthcare providers are, uh, are, uh, are developing these systems as we speak, but as you saw, 
and TouchLink already has one. It's already HIPAA compliant. You can get on the phone uh, with your uh, <clears throat> with your your parents or your family's doctor, uh, even if your parents live on another coast, and, and it still allows you to uh, help with that interaction. That can a lot of times be difficult because there's a, there's sometimes a lot of decisions to be made in end of life care, uh, healthcare, and end of life care. So uh, and. The other thing that he brought up is that you can't just hand these people Zoom, right? Or or Meet. You know, Zoom and Meet are great products, but you, you know you need that HIPAA compliance and you need that interface designed to be accessible. Otherwise, as Justin said, your uh, your use rate is going to tank. It has to be tailored to uh, the the <laughs> the proficiency of the customer that you're working with. The other um, solution that I really love from InTouchLink is this. I, I call it. I don't know what it's called yet, but I always call it a Peloton uh, uh, type uh, solution because that's the that's sort of the first company that really put it in people's homes. And if you don't know what it is, it's if you buy a Peloton bike, it has a screen on it, and you can join a live class whenever you want and, and interact with a live instructor. And it's sort of bringing that live interactive experience uh, into your own home, right? They now have uh, stuff for your TV and stuff that goes on the walls and things like this. So this is absolutely super growing. And once again, why, why don't you just use Zoom, right? Is because you need better technology uh, that is more suited towards a dynamic people joining nationwide, uh, experiencing different types of lag. It needs to be seamless from the instructor side and all this sort of stuff. But I've been calling it the sort of idea of telepresent entertainment. It's when you sort of need a virtual experiment where you're taking a yoga class or a dance class or a workout or you're on a bike or whatever type of thing. Uh, but it doesn't even have to be that sort of uh, 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 that <laughs> active of a situation, right? Uh, I could see eventually it's going to become uh, more of a, a streamer user type, right? If there's activities going on and uh, lots of people with mobility problems, physical mobility problems, they can join concerts and, and things like that as long as someone's making the data available for people to join locally. And that in, in itself will allow you to connect more people to the activities uh, nationwide and at the individual community. So streaming, telepresence, uh, all these things sort of put together uh, to make sure that people are interacting with live and current events is the best way to sort of create community, right? So it doesn't have to be yoga classes. It can literally be church and con concerts as well, too. And as I mentioned, this, this type of technology is used in high-end products like the Peloton bikes, but also uh, one of my favorite adoptions of it is, of course, the telepresence um, in, <laughs> in sort of any sort of retail environment too. So tying the two uh, type of solutions together, that sort of telepresence and tele-interaction, it's huge in the kiosks and, and not only retail, uh, but air, airlines have started to adopt it too, just to uh, create that consolidations of resources. As Justin mentioned, you know, you can have much higher quality classes you don't have to hire a yoga instructor at absolutely every single one of your facilities. And you can now hire like three great ones in one city like LA that has a ton of them and they can run your entire schedule of yoga classes at all your nationwide facilities. So it just once again, makes financial sense and makes your product a lot better. So let's wrap things up. Um, so uh, to wrap things up today, uh, <laughs> once again, thanks to Justin for uh, for coming. Uh, uh, as as we've been talking about, they're they're obviously the number one provider. You saw all the unique solutions uh, that are specifically tailored to this industry, right? In terms of the tracking, you can tell the the how much have they eaten, what is their mood, what is their intendance, what has they been watching. It's all this sort of stuff that uh, is is ex ex explicitly relevant to this vertical, but. Uh, wouldn't appear on a general digital signage platform. So you can really see how uh, their platform really adds extra features to this vertical, right? The second one, types of real valuable, of course, the, tele, the telehealth aspect, uh, uh, tons of value there on both sides. Um, and of course, that in-room channel, and, you know, as he mentioned, increases that community and the communication. Uh, and it's all about trying to make people feel more part of a community because no one wants to sit alone <laughs> by themselves. They want to get involved in events uh, with other people. And sometimes they can't. So they need that virtual experience, too, which is what some of those uh, those telepresence classes are about, too. So 
And, uh, and of course, it's uh, AOpen about providing the, the driver of this modern web technology on a number of platforms, works with NETV, uh, and is scalable you know, from kiosks to screens, to in, the in-room TV, and all that sort of stuff. So that about does it for today. Um, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, once again, my name is Miles Schofield, and I'm going to kick it back over to Chris to wrap things up. All right, thank you, appreciate it. Um, and we'll actually reach out on the questions um, by email just because of time, because uh, we don't wanna obviously run over because your time is very important. Uh, just a couple of the items that I wanted to just kind of reiterate or cover is um, as both um, Justin and Miles mentioned, you know, one of, one of the key components of all of this work and coming together is to have more of a set it and forget it type experience. Because uh, one of the things is you're, you're trying to create an environment that uh, makes it feel like a, a, a home atmosphere. And one of those pieces is you can't really have somebody uh, coming in every few minutes to always have to fix electronics, take it down, take it apart figure out what's wrong with it, ship it somewhere, ship it back, um, have strangers come in and out of the home constantly checking uh, what's wrong with it, what's happening. And that, that's really important um, to us because we, we play in a lot of uh, sandboxes outside of this, including the medical space, um, business, everything all the way through the ordering systems you use in quick serve restaurants and why that plays a key uh, factor is um, AOpen's products on our, our Windows and Linux is very reliable. We have a less than 2% failure rate across the board on all of those products and our Chrome line is less than 1%. So that creates from um, calling a lot of different services, creating overhead for IT infrastructure. Uh, it eliminates um, all those different types of calls, pull and replace, waitings, tracking, and all those, uh, the headaches that kind of make you want to steer clear of um, switching to electronics. So that's a, that's a really important to us. And that's actually our uh, key factor in our products is those, we only build commercial grade solutions. We only build uh, medical and industrial grade solutions because our focus is to make sure that once you buy it, once you use it, um, it's just going to work and you're not going to require any maintenance on it. Because once again, uh, we're the silent partner. We're, we're built to be placed behind whatever it is you're trying to use and um, not be in the forefront or um, constantly fiddled with in order to uh, make the real hero of the solution work. So uh, the big focus too is it's, uh, we cover everything from, if you're looking for touch screens, as Miles said, all in one type displays, um, something that can be used in the, in the front of the building. Nowadays with everything that's going on, there's not a lot of um, um, entrance or uh, egressing or degressing from buildings just because of, you have to be very careful of what's coming in and out of the, the centers. So we have everything from the front door um, that can be used to monitor who's coming in and out all the way through the, the displays, the interactive materials, all the way to the rooms. So really you can cover just about every component um, of your center from the parking lot all the way through the inside because uh, we have a wide range of temperature operated solutions as well. So um, if you do have any questions on any of that, um, it's it, you can reach out to info at aopen.com. Um, as far as the hardware goes, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, and then we're more than happy to work with InTouch Link on providing demos or um, any training or solutions. Miles is always available if you have conversations on how are we gonna step back and look at this? How do we engineer it? Can we slow roll it? Can we fast roll it? If you have any of those questions, we're definitely here to help. Um, you don't have to figure it out on your own. We have those resources available just to have the conversation. So please feel free to reach out to us. Um, I want to thank everybody again for participating in today's webinar. I uh, also want to thank uh, Justin Gaderis from uh, InTouchLink for joining us and all the valuable information. Uh, we definitely look forward to uh, moving forward in this market with you. And also, um, 
just as a reminder, all the content, the recordings and everything uh, will be sent out to all the attendees today. So once it is, please feel free to share it with any um, anyone that you see fit. And we'll be sure to uh, reach out to you for all your questions and needs. So thanks again, everybody, and have a great day.